Yep. Okay, uh, so today I want to talk about framework for source code rules. I like to put quotation marks around that because it's a bit of a uh, work in progress of title, both and whether it is a framework and source code rules. Uh, we haven't really decided on the naming convention there. Uh, but basically, um, we started taking a look at a number of things uh, like approval rules, code owners, protected branches, uh, status checks, things like that. Um, and they are kind of spread right now all across the settings uh, page. And it's very difficult for a user to get an overall view of, of what's in place, um, especially if you look at it from like a branch view, uh, to know what is uh, what settings you put in place for your branch basically requires you to go to three or four different places in the settings, uh, which is not an ideal experience. Um, and uh, I don't know if it's safe or not to share this, so I won't, but uh, in the uh, post-purchase survey, uh, these are the type of things that uh, they're very high on that list of uh, the things that people list as reasons why they're willing to upgrade. Uh, so this is definitely an area where uh, a lot of customers are willing to make a decision about. So it seems like a uh, interesting area to look into it. Um, and it's been more than 90 days, but uh, Pedro, Austin, and myself had an interesting Slack conversation where almost at the exact time, same time, we're like, you know what, we just need to reorganize these roles. Uh, Pedro said it, I said it, and it. So it was good evidence that we should start looking into this. Uh, so this started off as an issue, but it's since been uh, uh, bumped up to a uh, epic, um, and it's kind of evolved into a framework. So kind of the first thing that we did um, was to take a look at what's in place today and kind of compare these features across everything. So um, the way I did this was uh, to put together this table in Figma, and we just looked at a number of different attributes, um, whether it was a merge control push, uh, kind of like the roles that were involved, uh, some of the data points that were involved, uh, where the settings level late were at, uh, and also like how you viewed it and, and how you edited it, and kind of just compared all of these things across uh, these different features to see kind of where the overlaps are and where the differences are um, as kind of a first place to kind of hone in on the problem and see what, what might be able to be combined here. Uh, one interesting thing about this, uh, this was fun exercise doing this in Figma uh, by using auto layout and um, variants, you're able to uh, kind of standardize how people interact with this uh, and allows people to edit this pretty easily without having to do a lot of manual table editing. Uh, so from there, uh, once we kind of had that in place, uh, we kind of started talking a little bit about like, well, what is the scope of the project? Um, and in this, it kind of, uh, um, the idea of kind of what a framework should be kind of came out of that. Um, and I'll get more to that at the end. Uh, but the other thing uh, that came out of this conversation was, there was, there was a thought around like, well, let's just jump in to do some research here. Um, and it's such a wide problem. Um, we decided to take a step back before jumping into research and let's document what we do know and we don't know. Uh, so I created this issue um, and the idea here was we kind of listed out what we knew, what we didn't know, um, and then kind of rated them based on the impact of the design and the level of confidence and this exercise allowed us to not have to go research everything. There were some things that we uh, had high confidence in and feel like we didn't need to research right away, right off the bat. And there were other things that we thought we might need to research, but actually didn't have a high impact on the design. So this helped kind of narrow in the focus of, of, of where we needed to go from there. Um, in parallel to that, started looking at related efforts. Um, so while this, a lot of this does exist in the source code domain, it touches a lot of other things, uh, code review, compliance, uh, container security, access. Uh, so we started trying to just put together a list of all the things that might affect this uh, rule set. Um, so this is a place where I would like folks to, um, not necessarily now, but if you have time afterwards, if you are aware of something that might fall into this kind of rule set, um, by, by this kind of rule set, I mean something that affects how you ba basically safeguards, uh, I think is the word Austin was using, um, and I like it, it's a good word, um, of what 
what you can and can't do with regards to your repository. Um, so kind of branch rules, things like that. Um, this is the list we have currently today, but if anybody out there knows of other things that might play in here, um, I would love your thoughts. And if you could add them here in this uh, issue, that would be great. So once we kind of had the related efforts in place, um, sorry, one specific one came out of that was uh, there was the RBAC stuff that was going on. Uh, so this was an interesting one. I created a separate issue one for this because this seemed like something we need to take a little bit closer look at. Um, so what they're doing at first seemed a little bit like what we were doing in the sense that um, source code rules are likely to so consume users, roles, and groups, but both frameworks kind of control who can do what. Uh, so I worked a, a lot with Andy um, on this, and the thought was, is there a real uh, separation between these kinds of rules? So should RBAC be separate from these kinds of rules, or is that an artificial thing? Um, as it turned out, it is a real thing based on um, these differences here, uh, but I think it was an important uh, exercise to go through to not assume just because we've built features this way that there's automatically a separation between this. It was, it was an important exercise to go through to see, again, are these, are these separations artificial or are they real? Ultimately, we decided that they were different, uh, mostly because uh, these are have configurations of features and and really this was this was Andy here. Um, the difference between may versus must. So our back is who who may do stuff, and these rules are really about who must do stuff or what must be done in these situations. Um, so the next thing we started looking at was breaking down this problem. So now that we kind of had a sense of where we at, who we who we were working with, and what are the things were in play kind of broke, broke, broke the problem down into three separate efforts. Um, so one, define how source code rules should be organized, defining the data set, and then the UI patterns, David. Um, so the organization, this kind of is the crux of this problem. Um, this is the genesis of, of what is driving this effort. Uh, the way they are organized today isn't using, isn't working for our users, so we, are looking very much at how we can reorganize these things. Uh, so I went through and just kind of did a write up a little bit of what the current structure is today and some pros and cons and some alternatives that we might uh, explore and reasons why we might want to do that. Um, this is largely where this effort is today. Uh, this is the focus of what we're doing and now. I'll show a little bit of UI later on, uh, but really those are just explorations that are kind of visualizations of thinking through this problem. This is, this is actually where this is at right now. Uh, in parallel to that, started looking at the data set. Um, so going back to uh, this kind of table here and looking at these related efforts, what are, the, what are the data points that we need to account for? And what are the ones that are universal across all of these things? And what are the ones that it varies? Um, so I've listed this out here with some examples and um, some open questions around uh, these data points that need to be answered there. Um, and then the last thing um, we started looking at was the UI patterns needed. Um, so I wanted to break down not just, uh, since it is a large effort and it kind of requires list views and edit views and flows and things like that, break down kind of what are the items that we need to account for so we can plan for those uh, and divide and conquer a little bit um, with the efforts there. Um, so then jumping into the UI a little bit, um, my first thought was uh, that the organization was the ultimate uh, driver of the confusion here. So uh, went through an exploration where maybe we should just get rid of that organization altogether by flattening the list. Um, I worked with Holly, who is my pair designer. Um, actually, Andy was, but uh, Holly and I still do some pair design. And we had a wonderful like list versus tables debate. Um, I mentioned that um, I think ultimately lists are not a flat list is not going to be the way to do this because it ultimately rises and falls too much on the filter and editing. 
Uh, but, I, but I'll include this here because I think it was a valuable list versus tables debate. Um, and basically the crux of that argument was, can you make a list as scannable as a table? Uh, which was an interesting exploration. Um, so now I'll go through like a couple of the uh, UI explorations that, that we've been doing. I'll go through these very quickly because again, um, notice the title here and big red disclaimer. These are not final, these are just explorations. Like I said, we're really in the defining organization phase right now. Um, so these are definitely all organizational, uh, just explorations at this point. So the first one we did, kind of a bust, but this was happening about the same time that the merge request framework came out. So uh, the thought was, why create a new framework, right? Why, why, why don't we just see if we can apply that one there? Ultimately, this one kind of fails, falls apart because it's just, this was, this was always designed to be a view, not an edit. Uh, so you just end up with very interesting uh, kind of edit buttons everywhere that doesn't really work out. Uh, like I mentioned before, did take a long look at uh, lists versus tables. Um, so there is a lot of explorations around that. Um, so thank you for Holly for pushing me to, can we make these lists scannable? Um, again, I think this might not be the uh, way to go. We also started taking a look at the edit flow um, and how we might do that. So documented kind of what is currently in place and what the current forms look like. Uh, took a pass at grouping those together um, in a new way. Uh, but really this is kind of the crux of, of the uh, exploration at this point is the masonry around um, how can we organize these things, whether we're, we're gonna do that in a modal sidebar, inline, um, or in a new page. And we also took a look at what, what some of that might look like in the uh, UI itself. Um, I'm gonna skip ahead here a little bit. Um, kind of where we're at now is exploring dynamic grouping. So is, is grouping by branch the right way to do it? Is it grouping by type or maybe we give them both? Um, also maybe that's a little bit complicated. So let's just simplify that down into uh, uh, organizing by branch and then giving you a rule type uh, to basically give you that same view without having to have, have engineering build two, two views. Um, so like I said, this is all very much just exploration stuff. It might look high fidelity, but it is definitely just like top of mind thought, throw it down on paper. Um, where we're at now is um, definitely in the exploration phase. Uh, so along that way, um, I spent a lot of time figuring out like what, what is the actual deliverable here? And out of that came this issue, uh, which is basically me just brain dumping my, all of my thoughts of like what might go into a framework. Uh, so I'd invite people to check this out. Um, it's more of a, take it as a brain dump, not as a prescriptive type thing. Um, and where we're at today, we are moving into the research phase. So the questions that we are trying to answer, um, top of mind questions that we're trying to answer are confirm, is organizing by branch the, the correct way to be? That's, that's emerging as kind of the dominant organizational structure that we're trying to go through. Uh, is there value in seeing that alternate view uh, by rule type? How much detail do we really need in the list view? Uh, and the level of grouping for editing. So should we edit individual pieces or have a giant form to edit lots of those? Uh, and lastly, so this is a Q4 OKR for the create um, stage. So this will be uh, largely my focus um, and a bit of the team's focus moving forward over the next quarter. And sorry for talking fast, but there we go.